Hello everybody, it is Dingle here and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I hope y'all are doing super super duper well and today guys I'm going to tell you the top seven secrets for me right now currently that I would love to share with you about The Sims 4. This includes cheat codes, secret tips and tricks that I've learned just recently and a lot of them actually came from you all over on my Twitch channel. I swear I learn something new about The Sims every single time I go to stream. I love learning from from each other. I love learning from you all and I can't wait to share the top seven that I have right now with you guys today. Some of these tips and tricks may sound basic to you all and some of them may surprise you so stay tuned for those but either way I still get questions on these ones so if we can just pass along the knowledge to other people who don't know these tips and tricks then I'm totally gonna do it. I do have a video specifically on the top five cheat codes that I would recommend for you guys for The Sims 4 and if you want to check that out I will leave the link to that video in the description below. After you watch this video, if you guys have any other tips and tricks that you guys did not see on here that you would also love to pass on to the Sims 4 community, please leave them in the comment section below. Please sound off with all of your tips and tricks that you love to use. And without further ado, let's just get into it. So here we have our cottage living house, our starter home. I'm very obsessed with it, very, very attached to it. And I'm gonna use this lot for the first couple tips and tricks that I'm gonna show you guys today. So the first one. This one might sound basic. Like I like I explained in the beginning, some of these might sound basic to some people, but we were shocked on stream. A lot of us were shocked on stream because we didn't know that this was the case. I think we actually had to Google this one. So you know when you have your inventory like this and say you're going to go to a fair and you want to bring your best egg, the quality of your produce, you know, that type of thing. They're all stacked like this, right? And of course for a fair, you want to bring the most unique, the most best, the best egg that you have, or the best chicken, whatever it is. Or you simply want to put some eggs in the fridge, but not all of them. Okay, this is how you do it. To simply expand the stack of inventory that you have here, guess what you have to do? All you have to do is click this button right here, this little three, and all of a sudden you can see all of your eggs and all the different qualities. We've got an excellent egg in here, we have another excellent egg, and then we have a poor egg. So of course we wouldn't want to bring the poor egg to enter that into the egg contest in the town center. We would want to select some of these, but we wouldn't know what those were if we just had them all in a stack and didn't know how to expand it. Mind blowing, life changing. Okay, moving on. The next thing I wanna show you all, hit play here, is how to quickly grow your relationships. There might be some other interactions that quickly grow the relationship. So again, please comment below how you quickly grow your relationships if you wanna grow a relationship with somebody. These people are husband and wife, so we don't really have to grow their relationship. But say there is, oh look, there's some people over here that I might wanna quickly grow relationships with. Let's see. we've. Got Got just a very, very subpar relationship with Sarah Scott. So I want you guys to notice that level right there. But what I'm going to do is go into my phone, go over to this entertainment category and go take photo with. And then I'm going to select Sarah Scott and we're going to see just how fast this one interaction this one interaction helps us with our relationship, our friendship with Sarah Scott. And here we are. So I'm just going to snap away. I'm going to take, I think you take like five photos, just snap away with the photos. And then all of a sudden, I want to hover over Sarah Scott. Look at how much. Does anyone see that? Wait a second. Wait a, wait a freaking second. Look at how much that grew. If you do that just like two to three more times, all of a sudden you're good friends with them. It's amazing, especially if you're on that time crunch to really increase relationships, whether you're doing a 100 baby challenge, not so berry challenge, whatever you're doing, if you want to increase the relationships, I highly recommend taking photos with people. All right, my friends, we have come to this lot in order to demonstrate the next items I have to show you. All of these next things that I have to show you though, do need to have the BB move objects cheat on. That's not included in my seven tips that I have for today, but it's just kind of unsaid. But just in case you didn't know, this is the cheat that will allow us to move objects freely, size them up, move them around, etc. And I'm gonna show you exactly how I use that cheat with these next few items on my list that I have to show you. Next couple you might recognize from my other video, but I think they need to be said for the piece de resistance, the trick to the trick of what I wanna show you guys today. So 
before we get into the piece de resistance trick, I need to go over a few of the ones that you may have seen in my other video. Have you ever wondered how people clutter so well in their builds? Like everything is just kind of stacked on top of each other in such a beautiful way. It's placed wherever they want. Because as you can see, The Sims has all of these grid things and the plants and whatever you want to place are just snapping to these grids that The Sims has. But what you can do to place it wherever you want is simply hold down the Alt key. Just hold it down and now you can move it literally wherever you want. And you can imagine that this comes like with so many awesome opportunities to grab clutter and make whatever you want. These are not snapping to any sort of grid. And it's one of my favorite tricks in the book. The next thing I wanna show you guys is how to size up and size down your items. Say this plant is a little too big for your liking. Say you want it a little smaller or say you want it a little bit bigger. All you have to do, grab your plant and use the bracket keys on your keyboard. The left bracket key makes it smaller, the right bracket key makes it bigger. There's a limit on how small you can make it with just the bracket keys, but there is no limit with how large you can make this plant with the right bracket key. So between holding down Alt, placing it wherever you want, and then using the bracket key, look how cute it is to have like a bigger plant and a smaller plant. It's just so freaking cute. And this also applies to wall hangings. It applies to really anything, but I wanna show you how it applies to wall hangings. So in this space, I think this wall hanging is a little awkward. I think where it's placed on the wall is awkward. And I think its size for being above this credenza type of thing is awkward as well. So what I would like to do is take this, I wanna size it up a little bit, but now it's still too above the furniture for my liking. It looks a little awkward. So I'm gonna press down the alt key and now I get to put it wherever I freaking want. And I think I wanna put it there. And I think with some clutter and plants to put on this credenza, I'm just gonna call it a credenza. That's a really freaking cute entryway if I do say so myself. Speaking of adding clutter to the top of this credenza, say I want this plant, maybe a smaller version of this plant. Say I want maybe this plant in this way to be on top of the credenza. But as you can see, some items in The Sims don't necessarily snap to the top of the credenza, but some items do, like this jar right here. This jar looks adorable and it snaps to the top of the credenza, but I want this plant on top of the credenza. This is where raising and lowering your objects comes in. And the keys that you wanna use are the nine and zero keys. So nine, the bigger number, raises the plant up while the zero lowers the plant down. So what I wanna do is raise it to a where I want it and you'll notice since it doesn't snap to and the nine and zero keys are not necessarily a perfect solution it's either hovering a little bit above here or if I do just one zero down a little bit below but you know what the zero down makes it a little bit better I'm gonna place it like that here and since this item does not snap to the top of the credenza I can easily move it around and place it wherever I want on top and we can just call it a day that's adorable now I kind of want to move these jars wherever I want on the credenza too. I can easily move this one around on the credenza wherever I want because it doesn't snap too. But because the jars snap to the top of the credenza, you can see that there's only three spots where I can really put them on there. And that's because again, it is snapping to the surface because that's what's written in the code. And because there's only three spots and I might wanna put a lot of different clutter on here wherever I wanna put clutter, instead of it kind of looking like an unorganized mess, I kind of like all of these elements on here, but I really want this flower thing to maybe intersect with the jars and maybe kind of go behind them. I just want some more freedom with what I want to do on top of this credenza. So I'm going to show you a secret that I recently found out about through YouTube videos such as this that take care of the perfect or the freedom to place issue on this piece of furniture. And that my friends is the magic red shelf. This shelf is called the OMSP shelf. And how this shelf works here. You can do alt to move it wherever you want against a wall. Instead of having just three main sections like we saw with these jars earlier, instead of having the three main sections or like bigger blocks coded into it, it has a ton of tiny little blocks coded into it. You see how this coffee pot or this teapot snaps to the shelf, but you can see that there are just so many tiny little spaces coded into it instead of just one or two big blocks coded into it. To 
it. So say we wanna move everything on this credenza around where we want it to go. So I'm first going to move this book over to here, which it's snapping to it. I'm gonna move everything over to here actually, because I know that it's the perfect height. You'll see why having stuff at the perfect height is gonna be really exciting. So if I now press Alt and try to move this over to here, it again will try to snap to it. So what I'm gonna do is take away the thing that I don't want it to snap to. Just take away the thing that you do not want it to snap to. Press Alt, move over your object to about where you think you're going to want it on the surface you wanna move it to. Same with all of your other items. Now you can place them. So I kinda of wanted these jars over here. I'm gonna use the brackets to maybe size them down. I think that would look really good in front of these flowers. And I'm gonna move this teapot here and maybe the book goes in the center. And now what I'm gonna do is move back this item. I'm pressing down Alt here. And I find that they're not necessarily moved back perfectly like I wanted them to. So so it just takes a tiny bit of finagling. So I'm gonna take it away again. I'm going to move it here, 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 and here. And let's see what that looks like. Oh, I love that. That is so awesome. Okay, I'm obsessed with that. Perfect. So now we've used the shelf to place the items wherever we want on the surface. So that's one way you can use this shelf. Here's a second way how you can use this shelf. I'm gonna place a couple of my items over to the side. And so what you can do with this shelf is again, hold it, press Alt. It allows you to go up and down wherever you want. And I'm going to place this shelf so that the items are being placed kind of exactly where I want them to be placed as if this shelf was part of the credenza. So now that it's attached to the red shelf, I can move it around these tiny little blocks and have a lot more freedom when it comes to placing it. So technically the book and this teapot are still snapping to the shelf, which again has a lot of tiny little places it can snap to. So there's a lot more options than if I were to snap it to only the three slots on this credenza. I'm gonna take another one of these shelves to kind of move the other objects around. So I'm gonna place this kind of at the right height of things. I'm gonna move over my objects to the red shelf in the way that I would like them. So now they're snapped to that and I'm going to move this shelf over to where I kind of want these items here. And then I wanna place the shelf a little bit below the surface I want them to appear that they're snapping to, if that makes sense. And now I'm gonna show you how the magic shelf is even more magical than we thought. So the magic shelf has two swatches. It's got this red color so that we can see exactly where it is, where we're placing the items, etc. But then if you wanna use this method with your magic shelf, you go ahead and you do the other swatch, which makes it invisible. And now it looks like your items are snapped to the credenza in places that you freely wanted to move them around, but they're in fact snapping to a now invisible shelf. That's really freaking cool. I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna leave a link to this magic shelf. It's called the OMSP shelf, but I call it the magic red shelf for all of the reasons that you just saw. So I'll be leaving a link to it down below. And the very last magical tip that I want to show you guys today has to do with placing a lot of items at once versus going back into your inventory every time you want to place something. So let's use rocks, for example. So you've got like a river running here. I don't know. Use your imagination. You've got a river running through here and you want to line it with rocks, okay? Going in and grabbing your rocks all along a really long river and layering them like this. Even if you use alt, we're gonna use alt here and just kind of putting them in place wherever you want. That feels like a lot of effort because you have to keep going back into the catalog and bringing the rock out. I just learned this and I'm really excited to show you guys. So using your dropper tool, which that's not the trick. Don't, don't get me to, don't get it twisted. I know about the dropper tool. Even if you use the dropper tool once and you put it down, that's not continuously going to place items. So what you wanna do is use the dropper tool hold down shift and now you don't have to go back in ever ever went to the catalog if you want to keep doing the same rock. And what's really neat about this is you can also hold down shift and alt at the same time and start placing your rocks wherever you want. And it becomes really freaking easy to start doing more rock clutter 
around your river versus having to go in every time and grab a rock that you just want to put a lot of the same one down all the time. Look how easy that is. Now we've got rocks all along our river and that was within a matter of seconds. But guys, that is going to be it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. If you did and you have not hit the subscribe button yet, make sure you do so down below because we upload videos here every single Monday, Wednesday, and Sunday. Don't forget to share your tips and tricks that you would like to share with the Sims community down below in the comments. Please, oh, please give this video a big old thumbs up if you enjoyed it and I will catch you in the next one, my friends. I'll see you later. Bye!